Welcome back. Our statement reads, calculate the magnetic force of attraction between the northern and southern hemispheres of a spinning charged spherical shell. We've seen this a number of times already, so now we'll have a new application. All right, moving forward. The solution is, uh, from the vector potential, we can find a magnetic field, and then we can uh, apply app the uh, context-specific clues to find what we want. We know what the vector potential is from the textbook and many other examples where we've had to use it or find it. So taking the uh, curl of that, we get this uh, magnetic field of the N on the inside um, is equal to 2 mu naught r omega sigma over 3. And then remember, we're dealing with different coordinate systems here. Uh, spherical gives us a cosine theta r hat minus the sine theta theta hat. Again, when we do the same thing, taking a curl, but for the vector potential piecewise where we're outside the sphere, then we have to be a little more systematic in the curl application. Again, it kind of boils down to something reasonable here. Um, and since uh, we know that we go from big R to the 4 uh, divided by 3 little r cubed, but we're at the surface that we're worried about because we're looking at the northern and southern hemisphere. Um, so uh, we're at the surface, so we have to put big R, uh, little r evaluated at big R, and thus they, they cancel with just a factor of big R remaining. So that's why you don't see little r in the last step. All right, so now that we have the field from the potential, we can find the force uh, from the form F equal uh, the integral of the surface current density times the average magnetic field, uh, or cross product rather, not times. Now we just need to find what these parameters are. So K is equal to sigma V, which we know V is just the uh, linear velocity. So now we need to find the angular velocity. So that's why we have omega R sine theta phi hat direction. And uh, DA for this, again, so that's where in cylindrical and the radius isn't changing, we're a shell. It's just the uh, angular integrals, so r squared sine theta. And then b average is just, again, a result from Laplace's equation and other things in the theory. Uh, one half b in plus b out. Um, pushing this through, we add them together, and then we take their cross product. And we end up with mu naught over 6 times sigma omega r squared times 4 cosine theta theta hat plus sine theta r hat sine theta. All right, now let's execute this. Picking out the z component, which is all we want, uh, of theta hat, namely negative sine, and of r hat, namely cosine. Remember that these uh, unit vectors themselves are composed of Cartesian uh, representations because they shift every time uh, we change points. So therefore, we have uh, this cross product in the z direction, simplifying down with a lot of substitution, Euler's identity, cancellation, all that fun stuff. All those things canceling down, and we get to a uh, negative mu naught 2 over sigma omega r squared sine squared theta cosine theta. All right, so plugging this into the integral itself, and we get a... Uh, pretty quick straightforward integral the d phi term is 0 to 2 pi so that just gives us a uh, 2 pi factor and then since we're looking at the hemispheres we want from 0 to 2 pi or 0 to pi over 2 um, again we just chug this through uh, maybe even use something like symbol lab to help you with the calculation of the integral but we end up with the force equal to negative mu naught pi over 4 sigma omega r squared the whole thing squared in the z hat direction and we're good to go from there.